Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. The name of this episode is Did the First World War Happen in 1300 BC in Ancient Palestine, Israel? I mean, a World War Zero in ancient times. An event that caused an international conflict, actually foreshadowing the Third World War in our time. A conflict that involved many nations come together to do battle in ancient Israel, Palestine. On the Middle East, Middle Eastern, and who looks Middle Eastern? 3,000 years ago, the Middle East, the Levant, Palestine, Israel, had a very diverse population. It would be comparable to modern day New York, or London, or Brazil and South America. In the land of Palestine, Israel, there took place an international conflict, sort of a World War Zero. In this image, the Pharaoh of Egypt holds the heads of his enemies in his hands. This image show the diversity of the people who came against the Egyptian empire 3,000 years ago. In this image, you can see many different type of facial features, hair textures, skin tones, color of eyes, Who actually looks Middle Eastern? The diversity in the Middle East was much more sophisticated and complex than modern day students of history were led to believe. Coalition and alliance for combined action, especially a temporary alliance of political parties, forming a government or of states, in this case, different nations, came together and formed an alliance, a partnership, a bloc, a federation, a league, confederacy a combine underneath one king, the king of the Hittites, to war against the king of, of Egypt and fight against the Egyptian empire. This union contained many colors, many races. In these days, they were not called races. They were called nations. And these are the sons of Shem, Ham, and Japheth in a league 
or block or federation come to do battle at the land of the Middle East, Palestine, Israel. Something like the battle of Armageddon that's prophesied to happen in the future in the land of Palestine, Israel, Syria. But 3,000 years ago, this same type of battle occurred. That picture or image is from the book by Ippolito Rossellini, The Monuments of Egypt and Nubia. Ippolito Rossellini was born in 1800 and he died in 1843. He was born in Pisa and educated in Bologna. In 1824, he was appointed as a lecturer of Oriental languages at the University of Pisa. In 1825, he met the young French scholar Jean-Francois Champollion. Probably in Florence, this was just three years after the later had cracked the code of the hieroglyphics. The two men became good friends and met again in 1826. They dreamed of going to Egypt together and their dream became true when the Franco-Tuscan expedition was approved and funded by Charles X who was the king of France from 1824 to 1830, and Leopold II, who was the Grand Duke of Tuscany from 1824 to 1859. During the expedition, which lasted from July 1828 to December 1829, Rosalini made many drawings and paintings of ancient tombs and temples, which were published in nine volumes from 1832 to 1844. The Battles and Victories of Ramesses II from the Great Temple at Abu Simbel in the south of Egypt on page 39. He who owns Palestine, Israel, rules the world. This is part two. I hope you enjoyed video number one. If you haven't, I hope you go back to watch it. It will help you completely understand what's happening or what's being mentioned in part two. Teachers and students of biblical and secular history. Let's take a trip or journey to the Levant, which means the East, the land of the sun rise, the land biblically known as the land of Canaan. We are here to witness the decline of two great civilizations, 
the Egyptian Empire and the Hittite Empire. In the glorious rise of the sons of Eber, the rise of the Hebrew kingdoms in the land of Canaan. Three thousand years ago, a battle took place to determine the fate of the thin civilized world. Kodesh, 1300 BC, clash of the warrior kings. The king of the Egyptians, Mizraim in the Bible, against the king of the Hittites. The Hittites were known as sons of Japheth, Togomar in the Bible. These two kings, the king of Egypt, Mizraim, and the king of Togomar in Turkey, Anatolia, came together and fought a battle in the city of Kadesh, in the land of Canaan, to determine the fate of the world. The name of the city was Kadesh. Kadesh means holy in the Hebrew language. This story is not about ancient history. It's about what is happening today in modern day Palestine, Israel. Those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. This saying comes from the writings of George Santayana, a Spanish born American author. This saying is from 1905. It really has a simple meaning. Studying history is necessary to avoid repeating past mistakes. This history has parallels to modern day events. In a manner of speaking, we can compare this battle of two great empires in the aftermath of this battle to what's happening today in Palestine, Israel. If I just plainly explain to you, the same players or the same ethnic group, the same nations that fought this battle 3,000 years ago are returning to fight this modern day Battle of Kadesh or Megiddo in the land of Israel, Palestine, you would not believe me. What I mean, the same groups, Europeans under America and NATO, the Chinese and their allies, the Arab nations. If you believe or thought or was taught that the Middle East, the Levant, was a homogeneous area or region, and that everyone had the phenotype of Arab type people groups, you are sadly mistaken. And because of that era, the modern day world is doomed to fight a war that was fought by the same players, the same ethnic groups, 3,000 years ago. In this image, in the court of Pharaoh of Egypt, we can see plainly that there is an international coalition of nations being gathered together under Pharaoh to fight his enemies in the land of Canaan. And in this 
image, the king of the Hittites, face off against the king of Egypt. And the artist tried as best as he could to show the different ethnic types that fought this international war for the land of Canaan, the center of trade and commerce in the ancient world. In this image, we have Ethiopians from the land of Kush, Libyans from North Africa, and many other people groups all assembled together in the land of Canaan to fight a war. In this image, the two major powers, the king of Egypt and the king of the Hittites are facing off. These are the two powers or nations that brought all these other diverse nations to fight against each other in a international coalition of warfare in the land of Canaan. The Pharaoh, the Egyptians, were Hamites. The Hittites, Togomor, were Japhites. And their subject people were Shemites, like Syrians, Hebrews, and they hired mercenaries from Greece and different areas to help in this world war of ancient times. In this particular image, we see the hand of Pharaoh grabbing the heads of his enemies in this war that took place in Israel-Palestine. This image is important because it shows the diverse phenotypes that existed in the Middle East 3,000 years ago. In this image alone, you can see so-called classifications of people such as whites, blacks, Asians such as Chinese and Japanese, Indians, East Indians, Arabs, all existed together in the Middle East 3,000 years ago. The Hittites, who secular scholars called Hittites, not to be confused with the biblical Hittites who were Canaanites. The Hittites of secular history who lived in Turkey were the sons of Japheth. They were known as Togomar. As this history progressed, I will go more into details on who these people are according to history and archaeology. More importantly, biblical history. In this map, I'm showing the Egyptian Empire under Ramesses II in the color green, bordering on the Hittite Empire in the color red, at the height of its power and around the time of 1279 BC, according to secular historians. King of Mizraim, Mizraim was a son of Ham, or king of Egypt, Pharaoh Ramesses II and his chariot. This battle, the Battle of Kadesh, was famous, according to scholars, for the amount of chariots that were used on both sides. In this image, Ramesses II, fighting and trampling his enemies, but interestingly, also his allies. 
the people biblically known as Put or Libyans. Who were the people of North Africa? Who historically are not Arabs, but lived in North Africa before the expansion of the people of Arabia around the time of 600 AD. Who invaded the lands of Put and intermarried with the people of North Africa. So the people that live currently in North Africa are a blend of Arab people, groups, and Aboriginal North African people, groups, Libyans. And the Berbers are the indigenous of North Africa, Libya, Morocco, Algeria. And the ancient Berbers or North Africans were one of many people groups or nations that fought in the land of Palestine, Israel, in the Battle of Kadesh. The parallels today are incredible. Today, there's the group called Palestinians versus the group known as the State of Israel. Both groups are in nature not homogeneous, but they are made of different people groups coming together under one name. The Palestinians are made of different ethnic groups who lived in the land of Israel since the time of the Assyrians who merged to become one group, speaking one language, Arabic, under one name, Palestinian. The state of Israel is similar, a coalition of different groups from around the world. They're composed of Jewish groups from China, from India, from North Africa. So these are two groups, but are really not two groups, but coalitions of different diverse people coming together under the banner of one name, fighting a war in the Middle East, in the land of Israel, Palestine. Let me describe this. The Palestinian state and people are a multi-ethnic group living under one flag linguistically speaking Arabic, and they all share one culture, Arabic culture. The same can be said of the state of Israel, who are not a homogenous group. They all share one flag, one banner, a confederation of different ethnic groups, speaking Hebrew and observing Jewish culture, a union, a federation of many ethnic groups sharing the Jewish culture. The state of Palestine, Palestine is a state located in the southern Levant region of West Asia, founded on the 15th of November 1988 and officially governed by the Palestine Liberation Organization, the PLO. It claims the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip as its territory, all of which have been Israeli-occupied territories since the 1967 Six Day War. Palestinians, also referred to as Palestinian Arabs, are an ethno national group descending from peoples with a S peoples who have inhabited the region of Palestine over the millennia. 
and who are today culturally and linguistically outward. Etymology, although the concept of the Palestine region and its geographical extent has varied throughout history, it is now considered to be composed by the modern state of Israel, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip. The term Palestine, in Latin, Palestinia, is thought to have been a term coined by the ancient Greeks for the area of land occupied by the Philistines. The origins of the Palestinian people. The origins of Palestinians are complex and diverse. The region was not originally Arab. Its Arabization was a consequence of the gradual inclusion of Palestine within the rapidly expanding Islamic caliphates that was established by Arabian tribes and their local allies. Like in other Arabized Arab nations, the Arab identity of Palestinians are largely based on linguistic and cultural affiliation and is independent of the existence of any actual Arabian origins. Not every man, woman, and child in Palestine can trace their lineage back to Arab tribes. Palestine or Palestinians also consist of people who are only Arabs by culture and language. Palestine has undergone many demographic and religious upheavals throughout history. During the second millennium BC, it was inhabited by the Canaanites, a Semitic speaking peoples who practice the Canaanite religion. Their language might have been Semitic or Shemitic, but the Canaanites were actually Hamitic or Hamites. Palestinians share a strong genetic link to the ancient Canaanites. Some Palestinians can trace their lineage back to the Canaanites. Their modified version of the Canaanites. The Israelites emerged later as a separate ethno-religious group in the region. Jews eventually formed the majority of the population in Palestine during classical antiquity. However, the Jewish population in Jerusalem and its surroundings in Judea never fully recovered as a result of the Jewish Roman wars. The Romans expelled the Jews out of Palestine. Many Palestinians can trace their lineage back to Jews. In the centuries that followed, the region experienced political and economic unrest. Mass conversions to Christianity and subsequent Christianization of the Roman Empire and the religious persecution of minorities. The immigration of Christians, as well as the conversion of pagans, Jews, and Samaritans contributed to a Christian majority forming in late Roman and Byzantine Palestine. Some Palestinians can trace their lineage back to the Romans who expelled the Jews, Christian Romans, Byzantine Romans, pagans, meaning Syrians, Egyptians, Babylonians, 
Persians, Assyrians, all the previous invaders of Palestine and Samaritans. That's why the origin of the Palestinians are complex and diverse. In this image, there is a Palestinian mother and child. When the Palestinians say they are indigenous, they are correct, but not 100% correct. They are modified versions of Canaanites who married with all the people that lived in Canaan. Modified versions of those people. They married into Jews, Israelites, Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, Romans, and Arabs. You could compare this situation to the state of the Native American Indians who are modified versions of what Native Americans might have physically resembled before Columbus and before the colonization of North America by Europeans. The Cherokees today consist of people with facial features would be considered classically Native American, what we would consider Native American, but also consist of people who look German or Irish and African American. Cherokees are modified versions of what they might have looked like before 1492. That's what a Palestinian is, a modified version, a mixture of all the people that came and invaded the land of Palestine, Israel. Pre-Arab Islamic influences on the Palestinian national identity. While Palestinian culture is today primarily Arab and Islamic, many Palestinians identify themselves with earlier civilizations that inhabited the land of Palestine, including Natufians and Canaanites. Natufians are Canaanites. Prior to the Muslim conquest in the seventh century, the region of Greater Palestine was diverse in composition, many diverse people groups, and was predominantly made up of Aramaic speaking Christians, Jewish and Samaritan communities, as well as Arabic speaking Christians and Nabataeans who are Arabs and the Nabataeans mixed with the Edomites as well. In Ottoman times, the Palestinians considered themselves to be descended not only from Arab conquerors of the 7th century, but also from indigenous peoples who had lived in the country since time immemorial. Arabization of Palestine. The term Arab, as well as the presence of Arabians in the Syrian desert in the Fertile Crescent, is first seen in the Assyrian sources from the 9th century BCE. Assyrian documents recorded the presence of Arabs in the Syrian desert and Fertile Crescent. Southern Palestine had a large Edomite and Arab population by the 4th century BCE. The Edomites 
and the Arabs live together. Inscriptional evidence over a millennium from the peripheral areas of Palestine, such as the Golan in the Negev, shows a prevalence of Arab names over Aramaic names from the Persian period, 550 to 350 BCE onwards. By that time, by the Persian period, the Arabic population basically dominated the area. And instead of Aramaic being spoken, you see Arabic being spoken. Bedouins have drifted in waves into Palestine since at least the 7th century after the Muslim conquest. So it was a continual migration of Arab people or Arabic speaking people into Palestine, Israel. Some of them, like the Arab al Sakur, south of Lake Kinneret, trace their origins to the Hejaz or Nejid in the Arabian Peninsula. While the Gazawaya ancestry is said to go back to Haran, Haran is Arabic for Arid, Misu al Jazel tribes. They speak distinct dialects of Arabic in the Galilee and the Negev, which means that they or the people in Palestine speak different dialects of Arabic. And that can determine exactly where these different Arabic speaking groups originated from. Arab populations had existed in some parts of Palestine prior to the conquest of Arabians, the Arab conquest of Palestine, Israel. Arabs lived in that area before the Muslim conquest. And some of these local Arab tribes and Bedouins fought as allies of Byzantium in resisting the invasion. Some Arabs fought alongside the Christian Byzantine Empire to stop the Arab invasion of Palestine, Israel, which the archaeological evidence indicates was a peaceful conquest. And the newcomers were allowed to settle in the old urban areas when the Arabs conquered Palestine. The scholars consider it was a peaceful conquest. Theories of population decline compensated by the importation of foreign populations are not confirmed by the archaeological records. The scholars considered that the land Palestine Israel was never emptied of its old inhabitants before the Arabs came and dominated the land, which means the Arabs found people already living there. They just absorbed them into their culture and language. When the prime minister of the state of Israel made the statement that the Palestinians were Amalekites or Edomites, he was partially correct. That's true. Edomites and Nabataeans or Ishmaelites married from the beginning. Esau, the father of the Edomites, one of his wives was one of the daughters of Ishmael or the Arabs. The Ishmaelites and the Edomites have always had a relationship of coexistence. So the prime minister of the state of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, was partially correct in calling the Palestinians Amalekites. Not all the Palestinians, but just some. But the relationship of coexistence and intermarrying 
what your neighbor existed in ancient Palestine, Israel. Israelites married their neighbors. The Moabites married their neighbors. The Edomites married their neighbors. The Arabs or Ishmaelites married their neighbors. Samson, two of his wives were Philistines. They or the people groups of ancient Palestine were wars and they existed together. So we can understand that the people groups in Palestine, Israel, they made love and they made war. And here is a ethnogeographical map of the Middle East during the time of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, around the time of 625 to 539 BC. And we can see the different ethnic groups and the regions where they lived. The demographics are completely different from modern day maps. Today, we have Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia. None of these nation states that exist today existed a thousand, thousand five hundred years ago, two thousand, two thousand five hundred years ago. And the people have also changed. They have partial genetic affiliation from ancient groups, but the majority of these lands today consist of Arabs or people groups that are dominated by Arab speaking culturally, linearly Arab people. 2,500 years ago, that was not the case. In this map, where the Arabs actually lived in ancient times are highlighted. Arabs and Qadar within the Neo-Babylonian Empire. And to the left, the smaller circle shows the other different ethnic groups, the Philistines. Philistia, where the name Palestine actually derived its name. Phoenicia, Judah, Edom, Moab. How the Arabs came to dominate this area is a story that has to be told, but not in this video. But I'm going to hint at how. The Arabs, like the Jews, sent colonies to other regions. When Israel left Egypt, they left the region of Goshen, and that's northern Egypt. After Israel left, colonies of Arabs lived in Egypt. This is one of the reasons that today many Arab-speaking people in Egypt will tell you that the ancient Egyptians look just like them because they lived in Egypt for, for centuries as allies with the Egyptians. Ishmael, according to the biblical scriptures, mother, Hagar, was an Egyptian. The Arabs had a relationship with the Egyptians. And the ancient Babylonians and ancient Assyrians had alliances with the Arabs. They were the policemen of the Middle East for the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, and the Persian Empire. Something like what they're doing today as they are 
policing the Middle East for the British interest, for American interest. The Arabs survived by being useful to the empires that lived in the Middle East. So they survived in this region while their neighbors like Judah or Aram or the Philistines were all expelled. The Arabs were able to stay in that area because of their alliances that they made with the different empires. Like the Arab nations made an alliance with the British during the time of Lawrence of Arabia to push out the Turks. The Arabs have always been on a friendly relationships with different groups, but they're no different than any other group. All nations have fought together and made peace treaties. That's just the way history has played itself out. Throughout history, a great diversity of peoples has moved into the region and made Palestine their homeland. Canaanites, Jebusites, Philistines from Crete, Philistines are from Egypt, Anatolians, people from Turkey, and Hellenic Greeks like Alexander, Hebrews, Amorites, Edomites, Nabataeans, Arameans or Syrians, Romans, Arabs, and Western European Crusaders like Franks or French and English and Germans. To name a few, each of them appropriated different regions that overlapped in time and competed for sovereignty and land. Others such as ancient Egyptians, Hittites, Persians, Babylonians, and the Mongol raids in the late 1200s. Yes, even Genghis Khan left babies or children in the land of Palestine, Israel. Were historical events whose successive occupations were as ravaging as the effects of major earthquakes. Like shooting stars, the various cultures shine for a brief moment before they faded out of official historical and cultural records of Palestine. The people, however, survived in their customs and manners. Fossils of these ancient civilizations survived into modernity. Albeit, modernity camouflaged under the veneer of Islam and Arabic culture. In other words, all these groups survived, but culturally they are considered Arabics or part of the Arabic culture. But Canaanites, Jebusites, Mongols, Edomites, Amorites, Hebrews, Greeks, all under the title of Arabic culture. It's a confederation of different ethnic types. That is what a Palestinian is today. American historian Bernard Lewis writes, clearly in Palestine, as elsewhere in the Middle East, the modern inhabitants include among their ancestors those who lived in the country in antiquity. Equally obvious, the demographic mix was greatly modified over the centuries by migration, deportation, immigration, and settlement. This was particularly true in Palestine, where the population was transformed by such events as the Jewish rebellion against Rome and its suppression, the Arab conquest, the coming and going of the Crusaders, this devastation and resettlement of the coastlands by the Mamelukes and Turkish regimes. And from the 19th century, by 
extensive migrations from both within and from outside the region. Though invasion and deportation and successive changes of rule and of culture, the face of the Palestinian population changed several times. No doubt, the original inhabitants were never entirely obliterated, but in the course of time, they were successively Judicized, Christianized, and Islamicized. Their language was transformed to Hebrew, then to Aramaic, then to Arabic. The Palestinians are a federation, an alliance of different nations united under one flag, under one name, Palestinians, under the culture of Arabic culture, but they are different ethnic groups living together, a confederation. The Palestinian state and people are a multi-ethnic group living under one flag, linguistically speaking Arabic, and they all share one culture, Arabic culture. The same can be said of the state of Israel, who are not a homogenous group. They all share one flag, one banner, a confederation of different ethnic groups, speaking Hebrew, and observing Jewish culture, a union, a federation of many ethnic groups sharing the Jewish culture. Israel, Israel, officially the state of Israel is a country in West Asia. It is bordered by Lebanon to the north, by Syria to the northeast, by Jordan to the east, by the Red Sea to the south, by Egypt to the southwest, by the Mediterranean Sea to the west, and by the Palestinian territories, the West Bank along the east, and the Gaza Strip along the southwest. Israel is located in the southern Levant, a region known historically as Canaan, Palestine, and the Holy Land in antiquity. It was home to several Israelite and Jewish kingdoms, including Israel and Judah. Over the ages, the region was ruled by powers such as the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Achaemenids, who are Persians, Greeks, and Romans. During Roman rule, Jews became a minority in Palestine. The region later came under Byzantine and Arab rule. In the Middle Ages, it was part of the Islamic Caliphates, the Crusader Kingdom, and the Ottoman Empire. The late 19th century saw the rise of Zionism, a movement advocating for the establishment of a Jewish homeland, during which the Jewish people began purchasing land in Palestine. Under the British mandate placed by the League of Nations after World War I, Jewish immigration to the region increased considerably, leading to tension between Jews and the Arab majority population. Modern Divisions of Ethnic Jews Historically, European Jews have been classified as belonging to two major groups, the Ashkenazim or Germanics, Ashkenaz 
meaning Germany, in medieval Hebrew, denoting their central European base. In the Sephardim, or Hispanics, Sephirad, meaning Hispania, or Iberia in Hebrew, denoting the Spanish Portuguese, or North African base. A third historical term, Mizrahim, or Easterners, Mizrak, being East in Hebrew, has been used to denote or to describe other non-European Jewish communities which have bases which are located further to the East. But its usage has changed both over time and relative to the location where it was used. One definition is the Jews who never left the Middle East. In contrast to the Sephardim who went west to Spain, Portugal, and North Africa. A similar three-part distinction in the Jewish community of the 16th century Venice is noted by Johnson as being divided into three nations, the Penitines from Spain, the Levantines, who were Turkish subjects, and the Nationine Tedesca, or Jews of German origin. To clarify this article up or clean it up a little, they admit to three divisions of ethnic Jews, the Ashkenazim or Germans, German Jews, Sephardim, Spanish Jews, Spanish, Portuguese, and North African Jews, and Mizrahim, Middle Eastern Jews, like Jews from Iran, Turkey, Afghanistan. The state of Israel is a federation of Jewish groups from all over the world, such as the Chinese Jews from the city of Kaifeng, China. This picture is circa 1900. The divisions between the major Jewish groups are rough and their boundaries are not solid. There's not a clear indication of who's Ashkenazi, who's Sephardim, or Sephardim. The Mizrahim, or Mizrahim, for example, are a heterogeneous collection of North African, Middle Eastern Jewish communities, which are often as unrelated to each other as they are to any of the earlier mentioned Jewish groups. The North African and Middle Eastern Jews did not naturally share allegiances with each other or were friendly towards each other. In traditional religious usage and sometimes in modern usage, however, the Mizrahim are also termed Sephardi. Sometimes Middle Eastern Jews are called Sephardi or Spanish Jews due to similar styles of liturgy or prayer service. Despite independent evolutions, they lived in their own regions. Despite independent evolutions from Sephardim proper, so the North African Jews, Middle Eastern Jews, did not always have relationships with Spanish or Portuguese Jews. Thus, among such Mizrahim or Middle Eastern Jews, there are these other Jews that belong to the Middle Eastern or Mizrahim group, Iranian Jews, Iraqi Jews, Egyptian Jews, Sudanese Jews, Tunisian Jews, Algerian Jews, Moroccan Jews, Lebanese Jews, Libyan Jews, Syrian Jews, and various others. Other Asian groups that evolved separately from Sephardim include the Georgian, 
and mountain Jews from the Caucasus. Indian Jews, including the Malabar, Yehudim, or Yehidim, also called Cochin Jews, Bene Israel, Bene Manasseh, and Bene Ephraim, the Afghan Jews, and Bukharan Jews of Central Asia, and Chinese Jews, most notably the Kai Fong Jews. Also a part of this Jewish confederation of different ethnic Jewish types are Yemenite Jews. In this picture, Yemenite Jews and Sada, smoking Najal. The state of Israel is a confederation of different ethnic types of Jewish people from around the world. Yemenite Jews, Tim Manima, and they are from Yemen. And Kurdish Jews from Iraq. They are sometimes included under the category Mizrahim or Middle Eastern Jews. And also components or elements that make up the state of Israel are the Ethiopian Jews, as shown in this picture of Ethiopian Jewish women at Jerusalem Western Wall. This picture is from 2006. Distinct smaller Jewish groups include the Italian Rite Jews, also known as the only descendants of ancient Italian Jewish community, without later migrants to Italy, the Romanotes of Greece, various African Jews, including most numerously the Beta Israel of Ethiopia. Also included in this federation of Jewish people of different ethnic types are the Bini Manasseh Jews from Northern India. In this picture, they're celebrating Purim in Carmel, Israel. The people of the state of Palestine, the Palestinians, are a confederation of different ethnic types who are culturally and linguistically Arabs. The people of the state of Israel are different ethnic types who are culturally Jewish. Linguistically, they all speak Hebrew. So both the state of Israel and the state of Palestine are composed of confederations of different ethnic types. Let's turn our story to roughly around the year 3000 BC, around the time of Abraham or a little earlier. This is the age of the Bronze Age World Trade, 3000 BC, where in this period in history, the world nations tried desperately to create a system of world international trade with the land of Palestine, Israel as its center. This gigantic global world trade system existed from Britain, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, Greece, to the Levant, Turkey, Iraq, Mesopotamia, Egypt, North Africa, East Africa, Saudi Arabia, Iran, India, Central Asia, all the way to China and beyond to the Pacific Islands. In the center of this global trade network existed an ancient economic corridor or a trade route. The name of the trade route was the King's Highway. The King's Highway was a trade route of vital importance 
in the ancient Near East, connecting Africa with Mesopotamia. It ran from Egypt across the Sinai Peninsula to Aqaba or the Gulf of Aqaba, then turned northward across Transjordan to Damascus and the Euphrates River. This route or this highway began in Helipolis, Egypt. Actually, it went further down, but from there the highway turned northward through the Araba, past Petra, which is in the land of Edom, or the kingdom of Edom, and unto the land of Moab. And it passed the land of Moab and went into Rabbah Ammon, which was the capital of the Ammonites, the biblical Ammonites, went further north to Damascus, further north to the upper Euphrates. This was the center of this gigantic trade network. History. During the Iron Age, which was the time of the kingdoms of Israel, Ammon, Moab. Numerous ancient states, including Edom, Moab, Ammon, and various Aramean polities, depended largely on the king highway for trade. This trade made the kingdoms of this area extremely wealthy and gave them control of politics of the various nations around the world. In this image, we can also trace the road or the route, the King's Highway. And you can see the city of Alexandria, the city of Memphis in Egypt, the city of Gaza on the Mediterranean coast, Tyre, and also Petra, and Damascus, and Babylon. Around the time of Alexander of Macedon, 300 BC, this trade network was called the Silk Road. But this network existed 3000 BC and the Bronze Age. As you can clearly tell, this trade network connected the land of Israel-Palestine with Mesopotamia, Iran, Afghanistan, Central Asia, India, Tibet, the Himalayas, the Black Sea, and beyond. Something happened around the time of the Bronze Age that changed the course and direction of the world. And these different ethnic groups had this type of World War One or World War scenario or situation or conflict. This was part of the time of the Exodus. And this map, it's a map of the late Bronze Age civilizations in the Asian or Greece and the Eastern Mediterranean, Phoenicia, Philista, the Palestine-Israel area. In this book, Eric H. Klein, 1177 BC, the year civilization collapsed. Just when the nations at that time was placing an interconnected global system together that probably would have ushered worldwide peace, albeit under a pagan world system, 
a set of events took place that changed the course of where the world was heading at the time. It was a time of plagues, disasters, like natural disasters, and international warfare. It was the time of the Exodus. Eric H. Klein and other authors bear the historical records that shows just when the ancient pagan world was about to consolidate one global empire, something came and disrupted the whole system. The rise of the sons of Abraham, the Hebrew people, and other people that were near relatives to them rose and changed the course of the world. 7 BC, the year civilization collapsed, or the year the pagan world order collapsed. Summary To Eric Klein or Eric H. Klein. This is a turning or turning points in ancient history. Summary of the book 1177 BC, which this is one of many documents I would like to show to prove these ideas or concepts or history. Marauding groups known only as the Sea peoples who are Hebrew and other related groups invaded Egypt. The Pharaoh's army and navy managed to defeat them but the victory so weakened Egypt that it soon slid into decline and the Hebrews rose to power in the world as did most of the surrounding civilizations fell with the rise of the Israelites after centuries of brilliance the civilized world of the Bronze Age came to an abrupt cataclysmic end Kingdoms fell like dominoes over the course of just a few decades. This is with the exodus of the Israelites out of Egypt. No more Minoans or Mycenaeans. No more Trojans, Hittites or Babylonians. The thriving economy and cultures of the late second millennium BC, which had stretched from Greece to Egypt and Mesopotamia, suddenly ceased to exist. The Israelites broke up the trade network. Along with writing systems, technologies, or technology and monumental architecture, but the Sea Peoples alone could not have caused such widespread breakdown. The pagan world went into a dark age. How did it happen? This major new account of the causes of this first dark age. Eric Klein tells the gripping story of how the end was brought about by multiple interconnected failures ranging from invasion and revolt to earthquakes, drought, and the cutting of international trade routes. When the Israelites took over Palestine, Israel, there was a dismantling of the system. The reason why? was because the Israelites were setting up a new international trade system. Bringing to life the vibrant, multicultural world of these great civilizations, he draws a sweeping panorama of the empires and globalized peoples of the late Bronze Age and shows that it was their very interdependence that hastened their dramatic collapse and ushered in a dark age that lasted centuries. A dark age for the pagans, but for the Israelites, it was their rising. It was a change in culture, a compelling combination of narrative and the latest scholarship. 1177 BC sheds new light on the complex ties that gave rise to 
and ultimately destroyed the flourishing civilizations of the late Bronze Age and that set the stage for the emergence of classical Greek. The Israelites were called the Iron Age Kingdom along with the Edomites, the Moabites, and the Ammonites. They were not considered a Bronze Age Kingdom but an Iron Age Kingdom. With the decline of the Bronze Age Kingdoms then rose the Iron Age Kingdoms, the Israelites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Ishmaelites. The Bronze Age empires were involved in trade and commerce. The Iron Age kingdoms like Israel, Moab, Ammon were involved in warfare. Eventually, they would be involved in global trade, but out of necessity, the idea was who was going to control the land of Palestine, Israel. So there was war in the Levant between all these different neighbors. The contest was to see and decide who will control the global market. The biblical history attests to the fact that King David and King Solomon came out on top. That's why the scriptures mentions King Solomon as the richest king in the East. Globalized world system. Internationalism centered in the Mediterranean, the Levant. We have seen that for more than 300 years during the late Bronze Age from about the time of Hatshepsut, Reen, beginning about 1500 BC until the time that everything collapsed after 1200 BC, the Mediterranean region played host to a complex international world in which Minoans, Mycenaeans, Hittites, Assyrians, Babylonians, Metanians, Canaanites, Cyprats, and Egyptians all interacted, creating a cosmopolitan and globalized world system such as has only rarely been seen before the current day. It may have been this very internationalism that contributed to the apocalyptic disaster that ended the Bronze Age. The cultures of the Near East, Egypt and Greece, seem to have been so intertwined and interdependent by 1177 BC that the fall of one ultimately brought down the others. As one after another, the flourishing civilizations were destroyed by acts of man or nature or a lethal combination of both. Acts of man means the Israelites conquered the land of Canaan. Acts of nature means the most high God of Israel brought plagues and all type of natural disasters to destroy the people of Canaan and other areas to pave the way for his chosen people, Israel, to conquer the land of Palestine, Israel, and ultimately to control the globalized trade networks of the previous civilization, the Bronze Age. 3,000 years ago, Palestine, Israel was an international country and region of trade, cosmopolitan, in the middle of the Levant, the Middle East. So when someone asks you or any one of us who looks Middle Eastern, the answer is all of us, all of us. All so-called races, phenotypes, facial types, comes from the Levant. We all look like Middle Easterners 3,000 years ago.